Based on the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center regarding the global tropics hazards outlook, there's now a higher chance we're going to see tropical cyclone development by next week. Between the week of August 16th and August 22nd, we do see that right over the main development region. The Climate Prediction Center has outlined an area where we could see tropical storm Emily develop. And this is based on the fact that some computer models are forecasting that sh there should be a strong tropical wave that could have favorable conditions over this area we do see in terms of the chance that we could see tropical cyclone formation by next week right now it's still around a low 20 percent chance and of course is um very much in the long-term future so there's still a lot of time to really iron out the forecast and see and um really get the um, forecast a little bit more confident um as of right now but it's suddenly at least something to be aware of now that the climate prediction center is acknowledging that there could be an area of tropical cyclone development Here's a look at a few of the tropical disturbances we're keeping a close eye on right now. We of course have this tropical wave which is now moving to the west and it's expected to bring an enhanced amount of rainfall over the Caribbean islands where the Caribbean islands could experience anywhere from 2 to 4 inches of rain by the middle of this week. And moving a little bit further eastward, we have another tropical wave that should only enhance the rainfall again for the Caribbean as we approach the late week. However, the big tropical wave we're definitely going to keep an eye on when it comes to tropical cyclone formation is this um, tropical disturbance right here which is still over Africa at this time but once it moves off the African coast we could see it slow down and really gather itself to where we're going to see a lot more convective activity and the European model in fact does develop a low level center with this tropical wave so it's suddenly something to keep in mind as we approach next week but in terms of these two tropical waves it seems very unlikely we're going to see tropical cyclone development it seems like the dry air will be a little bit too much the wind shear will be very strong by the time these tropical disturbances um, approach the Caribbean and it seems like the moisture is going to be a little bit too spread out for the energy to converge in an efficient way. So as a result, we're unlikely to see tropical cyclone development from this tropical wave right here and this tropical wave right here. But um, just to the east of that, it's still a little bit too far out to be seen, but there is that possibility. So here's what the European model is forecasting when it comes to the relative humidity in the middle levels of the atmosphere. If we were to continue to move forward with the forecast, we do see that eventually this large area of moisture will approach the Caribbean. Right around the Wednesday time frame, it should approach Windward and Leeward Islands, and then it should approach Puerto Rico as well as Hispaniola between the Thursday and Friday time frame, and you should expect anywhere from two to three inches of rain and some of these clusters of thunderstorms associated with this tropical disturbance could bring rain that's heavy at times that could potentially raise the possibility of flash flooding especially if you live in a flood prone area so it's definitely at least something to keep in mind between the wednesday and friday time frame or the caribbean islands but when it comes to tropical cyclone development it seems unlikely we're go going to see that we see that the aerial moisture is just a little bit too spread out the convective activity needs to be a little bit more compact before i can confidently say this will have a better chance of developing and beyond that point we do see the european model fizzles this moisture out eventually it still has yet to be seen if how much moisture will be over the gulf of mexico by the time we approach next week we're definitely going to keep an eye on this but it seems like the current consensus is that the two most reliable computer models are expecting much with this piece of moisture however it's a different story when we take a look at this tropical wave now coming off the west african coast we do see that let me move a little bit further back we do see that this aerial moisture will move very slowly and the reason being is that the steering flow will be very weak over this tropical disturbance there won't be a lot of rain Ridging, um, just the north of it, which means that there won't be an air, um, there won't be a ridge that's really gonna make this accelerate to the west, which means that it'll move very slowly, and that could be bad because the uh, more slowly it moves, the more convective activity it's able to encounter because because uh, more. Um, more tropical waves would be able to converge with this area of moisture and that would mean that there's going to be even more humidity than um, than there already was which could raise the possibility of more convective activity occurring around this um, storm system and moving forward here's the Sunday time frame we do see that 
The European model does develop a well-defined low pressure system, however, it's definitely going to struggle in a scenario like this. There's too much dry air on the western half of this storm system. Um, it's very lopsided. Tropical cyclones require that the moisture revolve um, um, is pretty much ev equal on all areas because that would mean that there won't be any disparity when it comes to pressure which means that there won't be that which means that that'll increase the convergence as well as wind speed along the surface so the, there it's this storm is a little bit too lopsided to really have a good foundation for this to strengthen we still but we do see the European model eventually does um, surround this storm system with a little bit more moisture in the long term future and then beyond this point who knows what could happen there is plenty of dry air just to the west of it which would certainly be good news we need to see if this still keeps up this is very far out into the future so definitely take this with a grain of salt but even if we were to uh, forecast this in a more manageable time frame like let's say seven to eight days from now we see the European model forecast a well-defined low pressure system right over the main development region and when we see that during the heart of the hurricane season it's of course something we're going to need to pay close attention to we're just going to need to wait and see how much dry air there will be and plus the wind shear won't be a hundred percent um clear for this tropical disturbance as it moves westward as well let me show you guys the forecasted upper level winds over this storm so here's a forecast when it comes to the amount of wind shear that would be over this tropical disturbance we do see that the wind shear while i wouldn't say it's entirely at zero it's still light enough for this to have a pretty good chance of developing but we do see the wind shear does increase later on as it continues to head further westward which could be a pretty big inhibitor not only because the upper level winds would disorganize the center of circulation of this storm but the but the upper level winds would push more of the dry air on the western um on the western half of this storm because we do see that the upper level winds are coming moving from a westerly direction on the northwestern side of this storm so that would help push the dry air to weaken this storm which would certainly be the best case scenario and we even do see that just as south of this storm it's dealing with a strong amount of wind shear as well however it's in that small area where the wind shear is relatively light so it, if it could avoid the strong wind shear just the north and south of this storm system not only would it have a good chance of developing but the strong upper level winds just outside of the center circulation could in fact help the storm because it'll help the storm breathe a little bit more and enhance the outflow along the upper levels so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the upper level winds will build it's going to be very difficult for it to find a small area where it could be um where the conditions will be favorable for tropical cyclone development and wind shear will be light but certainly not impossible we've seen it many times with tropical cyclones where they're in a small area where the wind shear is just light enough for the center of circulation to organize itself so we're definitely going to keep tabs on that really all depends on the position of this upper level low that will be located just to the north of it as well as the upper level low that's going to be located just to the south of the equator and how strong it will be we're definitely going to pay close attention to those factors as we approach next week because i'll be a big determinant if we'll see tropical storm emily in the main development region or not so make sure to stay tuned for more updates now here's what the gfs model is forecasting over the same time period if we were to continue to move forward the gfs and the european model are in higher agreement regarding this tropical wave expect heavy rainfall over the caribbean islands anywhere from one to three to potentially um over three inches of rain in localized areas so definitely prepare by the mid to um later portion of this week but in terms of this tropical wave we do see it's definitely different from what the european model is stating the gfs model is expecting the dry air to win out which would certainly be the best case scenario um but we do see in the more long-term future the uh, moisture definitely does enhance but this is very far out so definitely don't take this seriously just yet but we do see that at least early on the gfs model doesn't expect a high enough amount of convective activity to exist over the main development region for the chance to be as high um, um for tropical cyclone development by next week um that could change in the more long-term future we eventually do see the gfs model does bring more moisture but the gfs model still expects the dry air to um take over and definitely diminish much of any chance 
of tropical cyclone development, which is certainly the best case scenario. However, it's good to point out that the European model has been the more accurate model so far this hurricane season. So I'd place my I lean my forecast a little bit more to the European model, what it's suggesting. Um, but the GFS model, we can't disregard either. It's still a pretty reliable model, and it still does bring moisture over the main development region, just not as much, and expects more dry air to inhibit tropical cyclone development. Definitely gonna need to pay close attention to this over the next several days really all depends on how strong the steering flows will be because the stronger the ridge will be the more likely we're going to see stronger winds that would force the dry air further south we're definitely going to need to keep tabs on how the ridging will build by next week so here's the amount of precipitation the european model is expecting um, as we approach um, this week and into next week we do see that the European model is expecting anywhere from two to four inches of rain between the main Caribbean islands as well as the Lesser Antilles and even as far south as Windward Island. So definitely be aware of the possibility of flash flooding and heavier rainfall for by the end of next week and even into early next week. So here are what the current ensemble members are stating um, from the European model and we do see that um, there are quite a bit of ensemble members at least developing a well-defined low pressure system by the time we approach next week. None of them would be considered tropical storm status, but it does make you think what would happen beyond the 240 hour mark because we um, there is certainly the possibility we could see this strengthen a lot more in the long term future. We're just going to need to wait and see once the forecast becomes more certain with the European model, but a decent amount of ensemble members do agree that we could see a powerful tropical wave by next week, which is certainly something to be aware of. In terms of the GFS ensemble members, we do see the good news is that the GFS model isn't as confident we're going to see as many tropical cyclones develop just off, I mean, as many um, tropical waves develop, which would certainly be the best case scenario. Um, but we're definitely going to need to um, still pay attention to any changes with the forecast because a lot could change between now and 10 and 10 days. And depending on how much dry air there is, we could easily see the GFS and SOM members shift their forecast to where they want to bring more a more powerful tropical wave into the main development region. We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to that possibility if it does occur. In terms of what the National Hurricane Center is stating when it comes to the potential of tropical cyclones over the next seven days, we do see the National Hurricane Center is not expecting any chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next week, which is certainly good news. That could change, however, um, like I said, by next week, now that the um, Climate Prediction Center has outlined an area where we could see tropical cyclone development, so stay tuned um, with the um, um, with the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook because we easily could see changes one of these days. So in terms of my overall forecast when it comes to the potential of Tropical Storm Emily, it's still definitely way too far out to say for certain if it'll develop. However, um, just keep in mind there is the possibility, especially by next week now that we have the, um, the Climate Prediction Center forecasting uh, the potential as well as the European model. So definitely pay close attention to this and for the Caribbean islands, um, be prepared for heavy rain by the end of this week. But that's it for now guys and I thank you guys for watching.